teaching lesson on how to effectively and efficiently conduct writing conferences with students in um, middle school. Um, our learning goals today, so at the completion of this uh, presentation, teachers will be able to practice using proper steps and procedures. When conducting those conferences, they'll be able to use proper checklists and questions when conducting the conferences. Um, also, how to provide positive and negative feedback to students without discouraging the writer, and also how to support students in becoming effective and efficient writers and readers. All right, so. This is just a question. So what steps and procedures are needed to conduct writing conferences with middle school students? Like what do you all think? What steps or procedures would you need in order to conduct effective writing conferences with students? Planning. Okay. Anything else? Um, a sample of their writing. Okay. So like model text. Mm -hmm. Okay. examples um, of good writing pieces that they can um, follow. Okay, good. So all of those are correct. So the thing is to remember like when you are setting up a writing workshop for students, the most important thing is to remember is that you have to have some form of a framework. So in that framework, um, the first thing that you want to look at is actually writing mini lessons. Um, you might have some students that are struggling with writing, so you might have to do a mini lesson on critical thinking, or you might have to do a lesson on cause and effect. Um, so the mini lesson that we're kind of going to look at today is using five critical thinking strategies for any class at any time. Um, in a few moments, I'm going to show you a YouTube video, and in that video, the presenter actually um, teaches five critical thinking strategies by using a paper ball analysis, which you all are going to create one with him in the video. Um, how the paper ball analysis work is that it's actually you crumble up a sheet of paper and you find five flat, relatively flat spots on the paper, um, and you number it one through five around the ball. Um, you can actually, well, this activity on the smart board is the one that you can actually use with the students, but the students actually roll the ball in whatever number the ball lands on, they actually make or they write a paragraph addressing that strategy. So you'll see like the different strategies in a few minutes in the video. And then you all will actually get to do one like a round robin. So the prompt, of course, that we're going to use today is our essential question for this class um, is what can one generation learn from another? So you can kind of just go ahead and start thinking of that as you are watching the video. Just have to take a piece of paper, crumple it up into a ball, 
and then find five relatively flat spots where they can write the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. Then students use this ball like a die. They'll roll it, and whatever number comes up on top will be the number of the strategy that they need to use. Okay. So at this time, you are able to create your paper ball. So you just ball up like you said, and then you're going to find um, five relatively spots on there, and you're going to write one, two, three, four, five around the ball. Um, if you roll a one, you're going to compare two things relating to generations. If you roll a two, you're going to tell us two different things about it. If you roll a three, you would do an analyze the topic, break it into parts, a four categorizing it, and then a five evaluate. Um, and of course, we're just using this as a central question, but like you said, it can be on anything. Um, so at this time, you can just roll it, and then whatever you get, you can just tell us um, what you got? You got a one? You got a five. Okay, you got a five. So if your prompt was, what can one generation learn from another? How can you evaluate that?
we should actually just be kind of a manager in a way, but allowing the kids to arrive to their own conclusions. So from there, um, you of course put the class back together and then you go into your whole class sharing and that's leaving those last five minutes of class to kind of wrap up everything. Um, this is also the time to offer that constructive or that positive feedback to the students. Um, of course, if they have a question and if, you know, as they were writing, they just wrote something so amazing they just want to share it with the class. So that's, you know, would also be the time for them to do that as well. So this is just kind of some pointers to remember. Um, the first thing that although we are teaching writers, we need to realize that we are writers ourselves. So there are certain things that we have went through within our own writing that we should be able to share with our students. So for example, um, you know, how we actually collaborate, how we respond to other writers, how we make improvements based on responses. So these touch kind of be things that we should remember as we are teaching our students. Um, also creating a writing community. Um, allow students to not only work by themselves, but of course in small groups with partners to create that, uh, that community of writing for them. Um, and then the model text, this is probably my favorite thing. Um, this is actually a website that you can actually go on and you can type in whatever grade you teach and it will provide model text to you. So if a student is struggling and you can't, uh, you know, you kind of just want to address the issue, maybe during the writing conference, this is just something that you can pull up on your computer instead of having them look at their paper, because maybe at this point they're just not getting it and they need to look at a line text. So this um, website will allow the students, will allow you to pull up this text, and um, this also could be a springboard for many lessons or class discussions about a specific writing lesson, um, and the website is provided. And then the most important thing is allow students to work at their own pace. Um, of course, classroom management will play a big role in this, because like I said before, you will have different things going on in the classroom, but no one should be writing or moving at the same pace. It's okay to have different um, things occurring in the classroom. Um, of course, you are a workshop manager, so your, chief, your, your job at this point is just to make sure everyone is on task and writing is being done. And then of course, um, invite students um, to actually collaborate with their peers. So the final thoughts is make sure that we have effective classroom management um, when conducting these writing workshops. Um, and make sure that we are laboring goals. I mean, if you have students that you know are going to be off task, maybe you're like, okay, at this time you need to have this completed, and then I need you to bring this to me, and then you need to move on to your next lesson. So of course we know our students. Um, make sure we keep our students on task. We'll continue for moments to introduce um, many lessons, and by doing this, we will have effective and efficient writers. Any questions? I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank you.